So here's another one that had been asked that kind of uh, is a bit different than, uh, you know, some of the rock stuff I've been showing. So this is just sort of sand dunes I was asked. So uh, I got some pictures of sand dunes. Now I created a really bad texture just to get started, just tileable texture that I've uh, placed it on. But here's how I went about modeling in this, it was just sort of figuring out what I needed. So I started with a plane. Um, I'm just going to move it up so it's not sitting right on it. Uh, in this case, I think I made it something like uh, 10 by 10 meters. And again, depends on how big you want it. But, you know, sand dunes should be fairly large. <clears throat> um, oh, and by the way here, I'm showing it strictly in Max with the array modifier. I would export only the one sand dune over to the engine, though. So I just wanted to see what it looked like. So I use the array modifier. So in here, uh, I then cranked some poly counts. So I wanted to, uh, somewhere like uh, 100 by 100, maybe, uh, maybe even more, maybe 150 by 150, which is totally unacceptable to go out to the engine, right? Um, but, you know, I wanted to start somewhere, and we're going to do a little bit of sculpting in Max in a sense. Max has got some really rudimentary sort of sculpty kind of tools. So I'm going to go to Convert to Edible Poly over to my ribbon, which on uh, in yours probably are across the top. And uh, I'm going to go into the Freeform tab, and we're going to use two tools, uh, you know, or three tools probably mainly here, maybe even four tools actually. Uh, one is going to be the push-pull. And uh, so the push-pull, if you hold down, you can see the brush size changing here. Uh, that's holding down Shift and Control. You could uh, change it here if you wanted, or you could even open up the flyout that drops down below for you and go to brush options and open that up. And you've got more settings to be able to shape the brush head if you want and uh, things like that. But I'm just using the hotkeys, which is shift control and uh, and bringing it up quite large. Now, I want to try to avoid uh, affecting the edge so much. and I'm trying to sculpt that up. You'll see it's coming up slowly, but so shift alt and scroll up and you'll be able to bring that up faster. Now I'm not going to worry too much about the edge at the moment. You're going to find out why in a sec. Um, bring the weight down and I'm just going to fill in some of this. And if you hold down shift just like in uh, ZBrush, if you've been a user of it, it turns to the smoothing brush, which is this relaxed brush here uh, and gives you uh, one of the functionalities of it. So I'm just going to go and Sculpt that up. Now I want to um, uh, fix these edges. So I've got a revert brush here and it'll revert it, but I'm going to take it down real soft and I'm just going to make sure that those edges aren't off because we want them to be able to overlap and crash into each other without uh, showing anything. Next, I'm going to go to the pinch brush and pretty big settings and i'm going to pinch it together and it's going to pinch it into kind of a you know this um you know sharper edge which you know which we're looking for i'm going to try to relax and just relax in here maybe a bit more uh, you know a sensitivity on it and i probably want to push it in some so i'm going to um, hold down alt and negative paint so it'll hold down alt and negative paint if you're wondering what these hotkeys are roll your mouse over the button and wait and it will tell you what those hotkeys are okay so I'm just gonna push this down maybe just pull the back up a little bit maybe go back to the pinch brush a little bit and just print pinch it together um, and you got to be careful you can kind of pinch it wherever you want you know so and again depending on the weight depending on the size of the brush you know how much pinch is going to happen here and again i'm going to go back to my revert and i'm just going to dial it down low and just sort of revert the edges back so i've got kind of that fixed up a bit it's not too bad maybe this needs to be softened out a little bit so we could again we could go to our relax uh you know relax it round it out a bit back to our pinch fix it up a little bit more get it a little more sharp where we want it sharp and yeah it's not too bad maybe i want to push this part in more or whatever so again you know it's going to be just sort of playing around to get you the uh what you're looking for 
Now, I don't want to go below the ground down here. I don't want this to dip down. The reason I don't want it to dip down is when you start pushing them together, you'll get it pushing up through the one beside it. So we want to kind of avoid that. And again, if you have to, you could always just pull it up a little bit with a soft brush. Now we want to retopo this and uh, turn it into uh, a more usable mesh. Oh, actually, no, sorry. First, what we should do is I'm going to go to the shift brush. I'm going to put it, take it off depth and just put it on spherical. And I'm going to freeze the Z axis so I don't uh, move it. And I'm going to push that in. And then I'm going to push that in. And I'm going to go in and relax this um, and try and round out. I need to... I don't really want those corners in there. So I'm gonna do something like that. So again, uh, bigger brush, push it in, smaller brush, push that in more sort of thing. Uh, grab the relax, give it a bunch of pushes until it's fixed. Because I kind of want them roundish on the edge, so I never see you know some sort of crazy hard corner show up, right? I mean, it just it wouldn't look very good. So, and that, by the way, in this brush, when you see these two, it's Control is the outer and Shift is the inner. And if you roll your mouse over, it will tell you all the hotkeys. There's no reason to to have to you know uh, ask me. Just roll your mouse over all these buttons, and it'll tell you what's going on. So there you go. It's kind of rounded out now. That would should work pretty good. Let's go and add a retopo um, retopology modifier, and I want to get it down pretty low, so I want to take it down to about 500. Um, now uh, let me run this compute, and we get this. You notice it's not very sharp on the top, but boy, that looks pretty good now. One of the things you can do is run up Anastropy and uh, Adaptive. Come on, to one. There we go. And I think regularized down is zero, and we should get more around this top edge. And so I just recomputed it there, um, you know, and it's uh, it's nice and fast. Now it's not as crisp, you know. If you look at it, it's nowhere near sharp and crisp. We could run some normal maps on that if we want, uh, but the other thing we can do is just say, okay, fine, let's collapse that down again. Let's go back to the uh, uh, pinch brush and take its pressure way down because that's really really high and still too high and let's just give it some of that sharpness that we wanted again and that looks pretty good there's our um there's our piece now uh, we want to unwrap this because it's uh, the it had unwrapping being a plane but it's not going to be very good at this stage so here's a really cool trick um, to do oh you know what the other one I want to do is here's a really cool thing about the relax brush um, so let's just take this up if I relax this see it just relaxes everything but if I hold down alt again run your mouse over it and do it what it does is it actually relaxes along the normals so it doesn't crush the mesh when you do the relax so I can even out the polys which you really want to do because if we're doing anything like um, you know the uh, um, the idea of painting vertex colors we want them fairly even so I can even them out a little bit I don't want to touch that top edge I want to keep it crisp but the rest of it even out just holding down alt and it doesn't flatten it you can see it doesn't with alt held down it doesn't collapse the mesh like that does so very handy um, tool set right there i'm going to stick um, uvw um, or so or unwrap sorry i think search for it. there you go open that up real uh real difficult unwrap going here i'm just going to say peel done okay so it's flattened out nicely um, if i go and put the material that i generated onto it you're going to find that the, um, the the grain of it, and let me just make it bigger. I'll just take this down so you can probably see it a little better uh, while we do this. You can see the, the texture now is just going straight across, but you'd expect these ripples to kind of follow it and whatnot and be able to follow around it. That's something you'd be able to do if you went and hand painted a specific texture map in Substance, for instance, or something. But... I'm too lazy for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip over to, to uh, my modeling tools again, but I need to be an edible poly. So I'm going to collapse the UVs down into it. 
and then I'm going to go to the um, tweak UVs and the tweak UVs is a brush again control to make it large okay and watch nice large I'm just going to go in and shove the UVs around to try and get it look like it follows that UV set a little better you know, like sort of the contours a little better so nice big brush here don't try and do it with a small one you'll end up you know doing something crazy like this and it just starts looking like a complete mess so it has to be done subtly but all i'm doing is manipulating the uvs at this point so uh but with a brush so i'm moving the points around in the unwrap window for all intents and purposes with a brush here so i can just sort of shove them where i need them to be good to go and that's it. It's uh, it's ready to go. It's ready to go out to the engine. And if we want to see what that's going to look like, uh, I'll just, you know, uh, copy in this case, this array modifier. And uh, you'll see what this one looks like now. I'm going to say paste. And there you go. So we're going to be able to get this, you know, uh, uh, you know, sand dunes kind of happening so that's another way to make little pieces i did my dirt piles this way uh, for instance i used the push pull brush and just made it a lumpy little mess that i could then just drop in wherever i needed a pile of dirt uh, for instance so that's a down and dirty fast way of modeling stuff and again we don't want to be outputting the array modifier that's it i'm outputting this and that's all